Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to talk about frost protection for, we're going to do two categories, cool weather crops, kale, radishes, spinach, your leafy greens, brassicas, and we're going to talk about warm weather crops. I don't have them in my garden yet, but now's a good time to plant. So a couple of things, your cool weather crops can actually take a frost and a freeze, and that's what I have in my garden right now. And in the last three days, it got down to 19 degrees, 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about minus six or seven Celsius. We're also going to talk about really cold temperatures down in the lower 20s Fahrenheit and then light frost because it makes a big difference. First of all, that's kale that was not protected over the last three days and it's perfectly fine. Let me spin around this way. We'll talk about everything that you see here. These are radishes that were not protected. They're a little beat up, especially when those temperatures get down to minus six, minus seven Celsius. You know, 20, 21 degrees Fahrenheit. But they survived. They're extremely hardy. So you really don't have to over worry about your cool weather crops, even with a significant temperature drop. So 32 degrees is freezing gets down to 31, 30, 29, 28, 27 degrees Fahrenheit. I wouldn't even worry about covering your cool weather crops. They're going to be perfectly fine. This is dill actually too, and the dill was not covered and it survived. A lot of people don't know that dill can take a frost. Now the cold periods over the last three days lasted anywhere from an hour to a couple of hours, so it was a good deep freeze. That's going to kill off all your warm weather crops. Cool weather crops are okay. And you'll have to look up online what are cool weather crops. Here's another example. These were covered. They look pretty good. And they were covered with these domes. These are window wells. And these are better, really, frost protection really is about your warm weather crops like your tomatoes and your peppers. And I just gently set this over there. That's going to hold heat in when that frost comes. The plants, obviously, they all survived well. Here's another example. These are radishes, spinach, and peas. I had to take out all the trellising and stuff. And I just used these corrugated pieces of plastic and I would pull them over. This would need two pieces. Just cover it over, weigh it down so the wind doesn't blow it off, and that would protect anything in here really, really well. If you have warm weather crops that are starting to sprout or come up, you could do something like this. There's a lot of different ways to do it. So the bottom line is really, you don't have to over worry about any cool weather crop. That's arugula right there. Perfectly fine, it wasn't protected. That is uh, pak choy, wasn't protected. Here's one more factor to keep in mind for the cool weather crops. Spinach, that can handle the cold weather. And that's been established. So those plants weren't covered. They did perfectly fine. Strawberry plants over there did perfectly fine. All of these strawberry plants, pretty good. This plant, this leaf's a little bit damaged, but everything is intact. Strawberry plants can take that cold temperature. This is a strawberry plant that I put in a couple days ago from a video, and they've been growing inside. This only had a couple of days of getting used to the wind, the cold, the sun, and getting established and when those cold periods came it's really killed this back a lot now if the root system survived the plant is going to be okay but you also want to think about how long your cool weather crops have been out in the garden if they've been established and it's been several weeks and they've been growing they're going to be able to take that frost if you just put them in and they're coming from the inside you may want to protect them because they're just not going to be tough like these strawberry plants that overwintered here grew back on their own versus the one that I transplanted. So that's, there's a lot to consider when you're protecting for frost. I just want to give you those examples so that you can, you know, apply them to your garden. And just coming through, these are radishes that were not protected. Some spinach, even celery. They all did really well. In here, I have beets coming up. They did fine. So you get the idea about the cool weather crops. You don't have to over worry about it. In this space, let's say I'm gonna be growing tomatoes and peppers, eggplant, maybe squash, zucchini, 
cucumbers, the warm weather crops. Let me show you how to best protect them because there is a strategy behind it. Now we're going to move to the warm weather crops. They cannot take a frost. If they get 30 minutes or an hour of temperatures below freezing, they're gonna be damaged. And those are cucumbers that were left out for the last three days and you can see that they froze and they died. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, tomatillo, squash, zucchini, melons, cantaloupe, pumpkins. There are a lot of warm weather crops that can't take that frost. So what do you do? You can use this dome. I have videos on how you make this. These are two pieces of window well. And let's just pretend this old big Zach marker is a tomato plant. You would drop this right over there, close up the vent. That should protect it from, you know, 32 degrees or less to about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like minus one or minus two Celsius. That's if that cold, and this is really important, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. That's only if that cold maybe drops down, you know, for an hour and then the warm weather, or well, not the warm weather, but the temperatures warm above freezing. And this is pretty good for protecting it for about an hour or two. If the night is gonna be colder for like two, three, four, five hours, you're probably gonna need more than this. This will help keep some of the heat in. It will use the heat from the earth that's rising to keep it warm, but it can only buffer so much. The colder it gets, this won't do a lot at 22 degrees Fahrenheit or minus six, minus seven Celsius. It just gets too cold. So. Light frost, hour or two, something like this would be fine. And you don't have to build anything like that. You could go ahead and just use a tote, just drop the tote over it. It could be clear like this, it could be dark like that. I do recommend just dropping a brick on top of anything that's a tote in case the wind comes. Now, again, if it's just gonna be like 31 degrees, just below freezing, you can use something like this. This is from a thrift store. It was a, either a dollar or two dollars. You can even go on Mondays, get them half price. That will protect your plant. For frosts that are just below freezing, that maybe last an hour. What's the best combination? This is what I prefer. Let's, let me get this out of the way here. Now, it's really hard, of course, to know how long is the fr frost gonna last. The, the, the temperatures, when you look on the uh, Weather Channel, they don't tell you that. So I like this. Put a clear vase, a pot over it, even if it has a hole in it, and then on top of that, you put your tote. And depending on how you space your plants out, you could probably have two tomato plants in there or a couple pepper plants in there. This will really work for several hours of protection, it can really manage frost that get into the mid 20s, you know, maybe minus four Celsius or something like that. And it's gonna protect your plant. It's really a double layer. So you have the plastic preventing the cold air in. You have the pocket of air that helps protect that vase. You have the vase itself that helps protect the pocket of air inside the vase. And the tomato plant or pepper plant or warm weather crop plant will be protected. You just wanna make sure that you take this off if everything is clear come the next day because all that sunlight, UV radiation coming in there can actually overheat and kill the plant. So you just have to be careful. But this is what I recommend most. And I do recommend making sure you weigh this down. Last thing you want is the wind coming and whipping it over. I hope that helps a little bit. So there is some strategy to how you protect your plants. Let me show you a build that I use for starting cool weather crops early, but also for protecting some of my warm weather crops that go out. I'm in Maryland zone seven. Today's March 30th. Our last frost date's not technically to May 15th. We've had severe frosts in May, but I do like getting my plants out early. I did a build video on this already. I will link it in the video description if you wanna see how to do it. This is just polycarbonate. It bends really easily, built a frame, rainbow it over, use bungee cords to secure it so the wind doesn't blow it out. And I would plant, actually what's in there right now is spinach. And this helps warm the soil when it's cooler, like it is in March, helps with germination, helps get those cool weather crops going really well. When it gets to be middle of April, 
third week of April, I'm going to drop some pepper plants into my beds, not here, in a different place. They will be protected by this. That's going to be my first wave of pepper plants to get them established, get them growing, and hopefully get a harvest sooner. But I know frost is coming, so I've kind of prepped you know, my vision or my design by putting one, two, three, four, I'll probably put in five pepper plants in here and they will go in a different part of my garden. But if the frost comes, I use basic bamboo poles. Now this piece of uh, foam board is too big, but the foam board would just slide right in there and it would cap that off. And that's what I do if the um, frost is coming and it would be just cut so that it will go all the way down to the bottom. That will seal in the air in there, that will protect the pepper plants. And this will really work if those temperatures are, you know, just below freezing, maybe to like 26 degrees Fahrenheit. But if it's hours, this may not work for the pepper plants. But in my zone, you know, later April, later May, it's not a prolonged four, five, six hour long period of frost. It could happen, knock on wood, I hope it doesn't. So you're really thinking about how long is that freezing period going on that night. And you're also thinking about what is the actual temperature. The deeper that the temperatures go, the harder it is. The deeper that the temperatures go, and the longer those temperatures persist, it really makes it hard sometimes to protect your warm weather crops. The cool weather crops, they can handle it, so don't over worry about that. And then when the morning comes, I just pop this out. Air circulates through here. This doesn't overheat pepper plants should be fine and everything should look good. So you want to have a strategy in place for protecting your warm weather crops. Um, maybe collect some of the vases that I was talking about that are right over there. Get a couple of totes and you know just have them stacked somewhere in case that early frost comes. I always say I'm gonna just wait till May 15th but I never do that. So I always push out some plants earlier. Have a plan. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're able to manage frost. Take care of your warm weather crops for 2022.